Hi friends, would you believe this tiny converter chip can deliver currents up to 3 amps? By using this chip, we can build a small variable DC to DC converter. This is the first PCB prototype. If you want to make one of these, stay tuned, I will show you how. Ok, as usual, I first start the procedure by schematic analysis. IC1 is the heart of this circuit. It's a highly efficient DC to DC buck converter chip. It can accept input voltages from 4.5 to 24 volts. Also, it introduces the thermal shutdown feature. This plot shows the relationship between efficiency and output current. As it is clear, the maximum efficiency achieved by applying 6.5 volts to the input and consuming around 800 milliamps. You can examine the plot for other input voltages as well. Actually, the best efficiency has been achieved in this area. So, let's come back to the schematic. C1 and C2 are used to reduce the noise of the input voltage. R2, R4 and R5 build a feedback path to the chip. R2 is a 200 kilo ohm multi-turn potentiometer to adjust the output voltage. L1 and C4 are buck converter elements. L2, C5 and C7 make an extra LC filter that I added to reduce the noise and ripple. The cutoff frequency of, the, of this filter is around 1 kHz. R6 limits the current flow to the EN pin. R1 value has been selected according to the data sheet. R3 and C3 are related to the bootstrap circuit and determined according to the data sheet. I used the Symaxis component libraries, I mean schematic symbol and PCB footprint for the MP2315 chip because these libraries are free and more importantly, they follow industrial IPC standards. Moreover, if you want to check the component prices and buy them, for instance, MP2315, you can simply type the component name and check the component price and its availability within a variety of distributors such as Moser, DigiQ, Funnel and others. Alright, these pictures show the last revision of the PCB board. It's the two layers PCB. This is the first PCB prototype that I ordered on the PCB way. I got 10 of them at the same price. Alright, as the first step, I removed the probe's head and the ground lid. Then I put the probe on times one and replace the ground lid with the ground spring. This is important because ground lead acts as an antenna and absorbs a lot of common mode noises. Ok, I should adjust the oscilloscope itself also. First I put the input on the AC coupling, then, then the bandwidth limit should be set on 20 MHz. Just two options, 20 MHz or full bandwidth. Then the probe should be set on times 1. So go up and select times 1. Then we should go to acquire and set the acquisition mode on peak detect. These are the mandatory steps that we should follow. Ok, now we are ready to examine the output noise. This is the initial PCB. I have soldered it on a small piece of prototyping board and also soldered a 470 microfarad capacitor on the output. As you can see on the power supply, I have set the input voltage to 20 volts and already adjusted the converter's output to 5 volts. I will show you the output voltage on the multimeter. 
So let me connect the multimeters probes to the output. This is the ground probe and this voltage would be 5 volts. Can you see that on the screen? Let me change the position and test again. Do you see 5 volts? So input is 20 and output is 5 volts. And the voltage difference between input and output is high. So let me put the multimeter aside and check the output noise using the oscilloscope. So let me connect this probe to the output, the ground spring on the ground and the probe on the output pin. Uh, let me make a connection. So you can see the noise on the oscilloscope. Let me change the time base and volt division. Now it's better. I should zoom in on the screen to show you the, to show you the details. Let me move the camera to the front and zoom in. Zoom in, zoom in. This is a bit high. Let me come back and focus. This seems to be okay. So let me connect the probe again and show you the noise. So I should lift my hand from the ground because it adds some extra noises. Okay, this is the true output noise. It has a frequency of around 14 Hz and you can check the amplitude, peak to peak and RMS values. Okay friends, Bob's your uncle. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Catch you next time.